They say when you save the ocean, you save the future. Those are the words of President Bill Clinton. As we celebrate World Ocean Day, we celebrate those who fight on a daily basis to ensure that we enjoy what we take for granted. And that is something that we would miss dearly if it was to be depicted as a natural resource. We are the same twins. I'm innocent. And I'm Millicent. If you didn't know, let me put our global challenge into perspective. There is now nearly 5.3 trillion micro and micro pieces of plastic in our ocean and 46,000 pieces every square mile of the ocean, weighing up to 269,000 tons. Every day around 8 million pieces of plastic makes their way into our ocean. That's why Ceres has decided to do something about it. Two important things are happening in this special broadcast. First, we are launching a new innovation from Ceres and we have a special treat in our World Ocean Day discussion, which will be hosted by Craig Foster, who is a South African documentary filmmaker, naturalist and founder of Sea Change Project. He is known for the film Octopus Teacher, for which he won an Academy Award in 2021. So, let's get down to business. We have an amazing giveaway <laughs> up for grabs, but for now, you have to wait until the end. But first, Millicent Craig is standing by to what promises to be an informative discussion. Today we're talking about plastic, plastic pollution and production and so on, which is obviously a critical part. Um, and you know, I, I see in the ocean um, real problems. Uh, I see uh, dead animals, I see dead birds. Um, I've even had an octopus eating a polystyrene cup and dying in front of me. And we did the autopsy and found 13 pieces of polystyrene in its intestine. So it's, it's a real, a real problem. Um, and, and frighteningly, you know, we've got, we're taking in that, um, that plastic ourselves. I don't think many people realize that we ingest as humans about a credit card's worth of pl plastic every week. And we're taking that in through uh, the water we drink, the food we eat, and the air we breathe. So it's coming back to haunt us uh, in a very powerful way. Um, South Africa, unfortunately, is, you know, 11th worst plastic um, polluter in the world in terms of ocean plastic. So we've got a long way to go. Um, and uh, we all need to come together. And this is why I'm so pleased that we, you know, we're quite a diverse group here trying to find uh, solutions. So I wanted to start, um, you know, by asking, maybe start with Martin if possible. And I mean, the big question really on my mind is, you know, how close is this issue uh, to your heart, uh, Martin? And is this a, I mean, is this more of a marketing thing or is this something that's um, more crucial to you? And maybe give a sense of, of, of where you come from and your connection to the ocean. Good afternoon, Craig. Um, thank you very much for, for the question. Um, you know, I, I think that you can't be, you can't help but be moved when you are exposed to people's personal experiences. Um, and when you talk like that, it's, it has a very visceral sort of feeling for me. Um, yeah, it's, you know, I feel it keenly on a personal level. I grew up, I grew up in, in Durban and my, my, my parents had a house uh, right on the beach. Uh, and I spent very, very much my whole childhood on that beach. My, my brother and I learned to swim there. He became a lifesaver. I learned to surf on that beach. Um, but I go back now, um, it's, it's, it's on the bluff, it's a, it's a part of Durban that is so terribly degraded now by, by pollution from the, from the way we've treated the environment around there, and it's, it's stark what's happened um, in, in the space of a portion of one short lifetime. Um, and uh, it, it definitely is the basis for and the, the sort of root of my own uh, Sort of deep sense of foreboding. You know, we're at a minute to midnight, and we just haven't done things fast enough. 
Now, I think personally, um, it has definitely rubbed off on my family. Uh, my oldest child now is studying conservation ecology uh, at uh, at university, and uh, she she travels back to KZN. Uh, I think there must be something about KZN that that pulls us back there. Um, uh, and she volunteers during her, her VAX uh, with an in, endangered wildlife group in northern KZN and Umfalozi. And it's it's uplifting and gut-wrenching all at the same time. Um, I, I really do think that the, the need for us as, as, as humans, as citizens, and of course, as, as big businesses with as much muscle as PepsiCo, we need to do more um, and we need to do it faster. So this, uh, this series, Let's Move to Paper Straws story is, uh, you know, it's one tiny thing, but we've got to do it. And we need to, do, we need to be doing these things faster. I suppose we all wish we could do them quicker, but it's not a, it's not a marketing thing. It's, it's necessary uh, within, you know, the, 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 the sphere of things we can change. And I'm so excited that we've now managed to get this thing over the line, Paul and his team of work tirelessly to make this one little positive step uh, done. Um, you know, uh, Series is also a brand that attracts a lot of attention because of its provenance, its history in South Africa, its market leadership position in that market segment. Um, and with us putting that paper straw on there, we're also sending a signal to everybody else, you know, get that plastic straw off that box. Um, so there's, there's a real sense too that we're putting down a marker. Thanks. Wonderful. Amazing. Thank you, Martin. Uh, if I could go to you, Anya, you on the ground, um, you, you're right there on the beach picking up those plastics uh, with your group. You, you're studying the science of it back to its source. Can you give me a sense of what you're seeing and how, if any, um, you see the solutions to this massive problem? Thanks, Greg. Thanks, everyone. Um, so, yes, I'm the founder of an organization called the Beach Co-op. And we've been uh, registered as a nonprofit for about four years. And it's interesting because how I came to starting the organization, I've always had a keen sense um, for and love for the ocean um, and studied and worked at WWF South Africa. But my local um, beach break is one that I wanted to give back to because I also spend time surfing there and with my family. Um, and so as a result, I, I met up with Professor Peter Ryan from UCT, he's an ornithologist, and he's been documenting along our coastline um, for the last 40 years, plastic that he's found. And so, you know, as through, through this conversation with him, um, I decided to work closely with him on a project at Surface Corner, and we still do new moon cleanups every new moon on the rocky shore. But in addition to that, we've involved citizens and encouraged them to help us collect data. And the methodology that we use is called the Dirty Dozen methodology. So participants um, attend a cleanup and we're able to track and, and answer questions. So where's this waste coming from? Why, why is it why are we finding it on our beaches? And potentially we could track back the source of um, you know, the waste that we're finding to try and come up with solutions. So you can imagine that straws um, are obviously one of the dirty dozen items and it's really such, a, such good news that Ceres is taking the step and moving towards changing um, the straws that they supply with their juice. I'm very encouraged to hear that. Um, and, and, you know, we've been tracking litter at Surface Corner for six years, like I've said. Um, and there, there's a lot of waste that ends up in the ocean um, and stays there. So in 2018, for example, um, because of our, us doing this long-term um, series of, of studies and do documenting with Peter and some of his students. We've been able to publish papers with them too because we noticed anemones ingesting plastic. But in 2018, in November 2018, we had this massive washout of plastic and the rock pools were covered in old bits of plastic. And we knew that, that it was old bits of plastic because they were floating. And when I say covered, I really mean there was more plastic than living objects subjects in, in the water and in the rock pools. Um, 
and it was it was heartbreaking and astounding and and peter has this theory that there's this plume of plastic waste in false bay um, that under certain conditions would wash up and um, basically reveal itself to us so the the problem the problem is massive and um, having brand owners and organizations like series on board trying to track tackle um, this problem is is really important um, I also wanted to ask and and find out from you um, where you're at with the extender producer responsibility re legislation um, as well as you know registering your product with the producer responsibility organization um, because the deadline for that is the 5th of November. Um, so just, yeah, but thanks. I think, I think that's, that's all I'm willing to share now, but if there are any questions. Wonderful. Wonderful, Anya. Thanks so much. Let's come back to that, that important question you have. I'd just like to touch on with Ella. Um, Ella, um, and I, I've, I've looked a little bit into your work. Very, very interesting. And you looking at, you know, people who are, maybe not physically connected to the ocean and advising them on what they can do um, to help. And I've been very interested in to, to find out a little bit more about that, if you could just give us a window into that work. Um, thank you so much, Craig. And, and thank you very much for the opportunity to share with everybody here. Um, with Heritage Day just around the corner, it's really important that we acknowledge not only our South African heritage, but also our natural heritage. And that is why it is so important. You know, Paul spoke about it earlier, about looking after our children's interests, our children's future. And that is what Generation Earth and the Miss Earth South Africa are really aimed at doing, preserving and conserving our natural heritage. And, you know, we, it's cause to celebrate. There's always um, something to complain about and point fingers. And But if we don't get involved and do that work that needs to be done, like um, Anya was speaking about those beach cleanups, People aren't going to connect with our environment. Um, they're not going to be feel passionate about the environment. With Generation Earth, it's really um, university students and high school learners, getting them to understand the problem, come up with ways of you know creating solutions. But in that process, they become passionate about it. So we often joke about how it's head, heart, hands. The head being the informative part, educating the heart becomes the passion driving force and then the hands create that change and when people are on the same page walking the same walk talking the same talk that is when the passion is ignited and it's re-energized that is when change not just doesn't just happen at a beach cleanup but it actually happens every day in their everyday lives we're wanting to change lifestyles not just on a celebration day of um, International Coastal Cleanup Day or Earth Day or World Environment Day, um, but actually every single day because the little the little increments that happen, you're wanting and you're in, inspired to do more and more every day. We see it with our Miss Earth South Africa ladies as well. They come into the program for the you know with a passion to do something with the environment, and they leave becoming environmental ambassadors that they carry off into their homes as mothers and they carry it into their uh, workspaces into their communities they are the change makers that we need to create this change ongoing change that is the lifestyle change that we speak of wonderful thanks so much ella um and i think you know um it's so critical of even people living away from the ocean um the ocean provides all the oxygen we need to, to breathe. At least 65% of the oxygen on this planet is created by phytoplankton in the ocean. So every single person on this planet, no matter how far they live away from the ocean, relies on it. We can go to Paul, um, and, and perhaps you want to comment on, on Anya's question. Um, do you want her to repeat that, or can you remember, Paul? Maybe it might be best to repeat, Anya. Um, yeah, it was asking about the extended producer responsibility legislation which is part of the waste management act 
Um, it's recently, you know, come out or it's been in iterations, um, but I think it's been finalized now and it's a means for producers and business owners to take responsibility for the products that they put on the market um, so that they um, consider the packaging in particular um, of, the, of such products and ensure that there's a circular economy and as little um, impact on our planet and leakage into our environment. Um, and so the, in, in addition to that, then the, the EPR, there's the producer responsibility organization, which each uh, organ, uh, brand or producing company needs to then sign up um, with a PRO by the 5th of um, November. So yeah, just wanting to, to find out where you're at as an organization with that. I wonder, should I answer that, Paul? Because I've been a yeah, sure. bit closer to it. Uh, do you mind, Craig? I'll run. I'll run. Oh, great. It. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, look, the EPR is a far-reaching piece of legislation that places a, a material onus on businesses like ours, and of course has a potentially massive impact on the entire value chain, um, and you know all the moving parts of it. So you know we might be one element of it, but of course it's upstream and downstream. Um, and we're you know we we're members of the Consumer Goods Council. We part of the Nedlec Forum that have shepherded this thing through. So you know so we're there and we're on board and we committed and we signed up. Um, we're still a little bit unhappy about some of the modalities. Um, you know we're allergic to more bureaucracy. Um, and gatekeepers that slow down things and increase costs, but um, but but we'll, we're going for it now. There's some very practical, obvious, immediate challenges that we face. For example, you know, what do you do with with pet bottles? Uh, we don't use a lot of pet bottles, fortunately, but hey, we do buy some of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, the quickest thing to do there is to shift to our pet, right? So you, you put a recycled component, but, you know, we don't make a lot of our pet in South Africa. So, you know, we don't want to start importing <laughs> our pet because now we're going to drive up our massive carbon footprint. The second thing is uh, it's more expensive, ironically. So, you know, and what do you do with those? You just make less money. Can you persuade your stakeholders that that's fine? Uh, do you pass those costs on to your consumers? What, what do you do about that? Um, in some cases, uh, our pet changes the color of the bottle uh, and then you get a negative consumer reaction. I mean, I could go on. I'm sure you're familiar with all of this. So we're really navigating our way through it as best we can. Um, where we found that this is going to take a bit longer. We've said so and said, look, we're up, but we're going to, you know, we're going to need a bit more time on this. Um, I think one of the easiest things to do is, is to decontent, so to lightweight wherever you are, whether it's paper or plastic, just use less of it. So we, you know, we've had an army of people on this now working to try and strip out redundant layers of packaging, but then you bump up against when you start to impact either food safety or its durability. But, but we've, we've already, you know, already identified a, a lot of, I think, quite meaningful areas where we'll be able to reduce content. And, and that's a big one. Uh, the other thing is, is supporting then recycling initiatives. Um, that, that's also just a first class thing to do. And in some cases, we've got reasonable recycling like glass. We, we don't buy a lot of it, but we do use some of it. Um, and, and cans, which is also okay, but not great. So we've, we've really pushed hard to, you know, to improve our own funding and participation in the businesses that are driving recycling. But, um, but I have to say that I think that uh, all of us, when I say, well, I'm talking about the big food companies, um, we, there's so much more that needs to be done. You know, a piece of legislation like this forces you into it and people do uh, bleat about it a bit, but one way or another, we got to find solutions for all of it. I just wish it could all happen faster, um, but, uh, but it's, it's usually easier said than done. But the, the short answer is we're there, we're on board, we signed up, and we're going to comply immediately where we can and where we can't. We're going to, we're going to, give, we're going to uh, you know, give timelines that we think are feasible. We don't want to do more harm. You know? yeah. Thanks, Martin. That's, 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 great. that's great news. Um, can I ask a bit about, Craig, can I go ahead? Go for it, yeah. Um, the Tetra 
Tetra Pak then? Because I, I assume that most of your um, series juice comes in in the paper kind of carton, but that's the external. And then internally, there's some structure with foil and plastic. Is that correct? So are those the layers you're referring to, um, Martin, when you say you're trying to reduce how much of it? Because I, I did a bit more research and um, it seems that the foil component of, of the Tetra Pak um, would, be, would, would be part of the PRO called MetPak. And um, but you might know better. And the and the plastic component would be polyethylene. So polyco would be the PRO for that um, part of the packaging. Is that correct? Um, yeah. Look, you're on. The, uh, when I was talking about layers, I was talking just generally. Remember that the the, the EPR covers all, all kinds of packaging in your business, and and um, you know these liquid cartons that you're referring to are just one. Um, so I was talking generally, um, the liquid cartons themselves, no, we're not delaminating those. Uh, they, they, they are a series of layers. Um, in uh, developed markets like uh, Sweden, which is their home, the entire thing is recycled. So every layer of it can be dismantled and can be recycled. There's no plastic in it. Um, but of course, there are, other, there are other coatings that are used on, on the board. So the, there's paper and there's foil. And then there are various layers that are applied to them, liquid layers that are applied to them that insulate them. Um, but it is extremely uh, uh, recyclable. I mean, that's its big that's its big win, and that's why carton packaging in in Europe continues to grow ahead of uh, basically PET. I mean, PET's in big trouble, and long may that be the case. Um, where people are getting out of PET, they're either getting into cans, which raises other issues, or they're getting into glass which is great, but heavy. So there's a big carbon footprint on that. Or they're going to carton because carton is very recyclable. But of course you need an industry that's, that supports it. So here in SA, um, we, we, yeah, we're big uh, Tetra Pax uh, uh, customers, but we also buy it from, uh, from, uh, from SIG. Um, uh, they, uh, you know, they're a big player as well. And we're now gonna, via the PepsiCo network, introduce two additional suppliers who also make carton, liquid cartons. Um, and uh, we encourage consumers to recycle those things because once they're dismantled, as it stands in SA, we can recycle about 85% of it uh, easily. Uh, you, you need a little bit more work to get the rest of it out, but that sounds to us like a very good next step to see if we can encourage the recyclability of those. There are quite a lot of people who think those cartons aren't recyclable. And that's a problem in and of itself, which is something we've got to We've got to change. Wonderful, thanks, Martin. And so I'd like to uh, ask you, Paul. You, uh, I hear at sort of coal face of actually now taking these plastic straws out of production. And uh, give us a sense. Is this? You would have think. Well, that's an easy thing. Let's just change to paper straws. Is it? Is it? Is it an easy process that everyone can do? All manufacturers can do. What? What? What challenges are you up against? Yeah. So yeah. So Craig, I think. Um, um, I think the most important thing about our brand series, I mean, I mean, people always ask me, what does the series brand stand for? And I think my answer to that was choicefulness. And then people are like, what? And I said, no, no, no. So basically, I mean, we, we firmly stand by the fact that we are the choices that we make. And I think series at the moment, we've kind of embodied that in terms of our actions with regards to paper straws. To your question in terms of how complicated it is, it's a fairly new technology. So we are literally at the forefront of it. And we are um, our aim on the brand is just to evolve with, um, with the technology so that obviously we can deliver the best um, for both our consumers as well as an environment so yes it was a very complicated process i mean um, we had to change quite a lot of um, our infrastructure within that factory to incorporate but i mean it is a stake in the ground of the brand in terms of taking it forward so it was kind of walking the talk so to speak and answering what this mm -hmm. means wonderful i'm um, going to you uh, ella in what what are you um, advice for consumers how can consumers help with this pro the pro this massive problem of plastic pollution what can they actually do um, to to help they obviously feel a lot, a lot of the time feel helpless 
you know, Craig, I think what is very important, and if anybody's ever met me or seen me do an assembly at a school or a TV interview, I've got these big green glasses. And because we're talking about ocean, <laughs> believe it or not, I got the blue ones too. <laughs> and it's about putting on the blue lenses, if you will. You know, as soon as we put these big glasses on and we shift our thinking, we see things differently. And I see the guys are Paul and Martin, you guys are killing yourself. It's okay, relax. <laughs> That's the whole thing. It's really, and, and the kids go absolutely mad when I put these mad boys on. But you know, it's really about putting green glasses on, putting your blue glasses now, because we're talking about the ocean, the health of our ocean, and what it means for every person. It doesn't matter where in South Africa you are, inland, on the coast, you are affected by the health of our ocean, by the health of our air. And if we can be voting with our money, we are telling manufacturers that this is the society that we come from. Where Paul had mentioned, you know, we are the choices that we make. We are now sharing that information with our manufacturers, with consumers. And that is why it is so important that we vote with our money. It's the only way that we can speak to manufacturers, speak to industry. And young people in schools, universities, they are able to actually have that spending power. And the manufacturer, the industry, they listen to where the demand is. It's supply and demand. We know this. It's, basic, um, it's a basic business um, plan where we have to create the demand by being active citizens. And again, it's that head, heart, hand, where we understand the problem, we become so passionate about it that our actions change, our buying power changes. So it really is this knock-on effect that everybody has to be involved with so that manufacturers, not just like series, but also other manufacturers can say, you know what, there's the demand, people are speaking to what it is that they want, what it is that they need going forward. Great, thank you so much for that. And, and Anya, your sense, if you had like carte blanche now somehow <laughs> in South Africa to try and make a big difference uh, to this, this massive problem, this enormous, you know, over 100,000 tons of plastic being uh, thrown into the ocean every year. Where do you see the major problems and where, what, what do you think we can do to make a difference from all walks of life? Wow, that's a big question, Craig. Um, but yes, I mean, we, we sit on a massive pile of plastic right now um, in our oceans, on our beaches, in our rivers. And so something needs to be done with the existing waste that we have, waste management. Our infrastructure in South Africa is really um, in a bad way and, and we need those systems to be working. We need um, our recycling uh, plants to be operating um, so that we can address the existing waste in our system. So that's at the kind of bottom end of the chain of custody. And then at the top end, the producers, the manufacturers, the systems need to be in place. And EPR, the Extended Producer Responsibility Legislation, is, is a step in that, in that direction where we have businesses being, being accountable for the waste that they're essentially producing. And so that the blame or the shame doesn't only rest on the consumer, you know, um, the consumer ends up doing the beach cleanups <laughs> and doing the cleaning because we, we don't have the, the government systems in place to manage the waste. Um, and I don't think that that's a bad thing, but we all need to be taking responsible, responsibility because as you said, we're all breathing. We're all breathing air, which comes from our commons. And, and in this case, our, co our commons is a healthy marine environment. Um, so yes, it needs to be dealt with at various scales along the chain of custody. And I'd say that the immediate needs are, are those that I've mentioned. Wonderful, that's fantastic, thank you. I, I also wanted to hear um, from everybody. I've the wonderful pr privilege um, 
of getting to know Jane Goodall uh, very well over the last uh, year or so, and she's inspired me so much and has, you know, really hit home how important hope is. Um, you know, so, so many young people today feel hopeless. We've got these massive environmental threats, COVID, um, so many challenges. So it would be incredible. I mean, I think to, to make this change, we need inspiration and we need hope. Maybe I can just start um, with you, Paul. Um, what message would you give, or what's your hope for the future for your children? And obviously, looking at you know, we're looking at plastic, we're looking at pollution, we're looking at ocean. What what would be your vision uh, and hope um, for for the for going forward? Yeah. So so with me, I think um, I think the starting point for me would just be awareness, because a lot of us are blind to the issues, right? And you mentioned obviously the environmental issues, which I think we are even more blind. And I think we only, it only really hits home when there's an issue. So for me, I think that awareness from very early on to understand the repercussions and the ramifications of actions now and how they impact later. So I think for me, it's just for people to one, obviously be aware as well as to educate themselves. And I mean, a small step in the right direction makes all the difference. I mean, I know we're talking about our brand now, but I mean, you know, we're just trying to make an impact where we can so that one, we can obviously lessen our footprint as well as inspire others to follow suit as well. Fantastic. And um, Martin, what's your, what's your, a deep sense of uh, hope uh, and, and and how would you go about making that happen? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd, I'd completely endorse Paul's point about uh, about awareness. I mean, it is sort of the fundamental building block to, to all of it, really. If people get what it means um, and that change from A to B involves this sacrifice, um, you, you, you change the dynamic, uh, you know, and in a in a conflicted country like ours, that's a that's a that's a big deal. That's it's not a light point. You know, it's not just an ad campaign. So I, I totally support that. Um, but I think that sort of looking forward, you know, you're talking about hope. I would say that the one thing that does give me hope is that we are more connected now. Maybe COVID's done that. I mean, you know, uh, everybody bleeds terribly about government uh, at just about every level but uh, you know through my lens we, we are more connected uh, you know the industry bodies we participate in are, are, are more organized they meet more regularly uh, we've had more say in this EPR than we would have otherwise had uh, for example over the HPL um, and that I find that encouraging because if we're talking then surely we're more likely to be able to together find um, solutions faster um, that are, you know, that are all to our complete benefit. You know, it's not business against government, against consumers or citizens. We have to join up. And at least at one level, at the regulatory level, there is definitely more communication taking place now, you know, in the middle of 2021. As I say, maybe COVID's forced us into it, but that encourages me a lot. Wonderful. And uh, Anya, what would you be your, your sense of this? Sorry. Um, I am um, sorry, just being disturbed by my kids. Um, no for me, what my, my sense is that um, we're still struggling as a South African nation and, and globally as well to understand and appreciate um, each person's diversity and what they bring. And so I think um, a way to ensure hope is to um, have make the time to listen to each other's stories. And in the case of our marine environment, it would be to listen to our connection to ocean and where that connection, connection stems from um, and to be able to share in that relationship with our oceans. Um, and of course, taking it beyond the ocean, it would be to our environment. And that's the way to restore um, our sense of being human on this planet. Wonderful. Um, Ella, what would you? What message of hope would you would you give? 
Um, it's a little bit twofold. My, my hope is that each individual understands the difference between need and want, where we will actually then be buying differently, behaving differently. You know, we, and if, if we've learned anything in this last year and a half, is that, you know, relationships with people, with planet, are far more important than our relationship with the material world. And if we can understand, and very quickly, I hope people can understand the difference between need and want, we would then also change the waste that is currently happening. Uh, another hope is, is really to enforce environmental preservation, conservation, education in the school system. Not just learning about climate change, not just learning um, about the big, the big words and the big terms, but actually to be doing community hours, to go out into the community, go out into their natural spaces as a prerequisite of the educational syllabus. Uh, it is my absolute hope to see one day it form part of the regular syllabus in schools so that children are growing up with this knowledge and passion that they are actually going into careers of an environmental nature. They are making different choices in whatever career choice that they make because they have a passion and a love for the environment that cannot be moved by any money or status or power, but rather that they understand that they are connected. People and planet go hand in hand. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And I think... Um, especially in South Africa, this issue of social justice is so critical. Um, and we just cannot think of doing conservation without lifting uh, poor people out of those terrible conditions uh, that they see themselves in. It's just, it's so, to, to see conservation without, um, you know, caring for humans is just not gonna work. And I think it's, 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 it's absolutely critical that we do this um, in our South African landscape um, and seascape. Um, so I think, um, you know, for me, um, I, my, my hope rests a lot with young people. Um, I find incredible young minds so brave and so conscious uh, coming through. I see even um, now in religious circles, interfaith circles, where you're having the issue of climate change and biodiversity right up in front, even the Pope pushing that very, very hard. It gives me a uh, a great deal of hope and also I'm in the I'm in the ocean every day I've been in the ocean for 10 years every day and I see these these incredible animals face to face I look in their eyes um, and I see their 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 beauty and their their innocence and I see also their tremendous resilience these animals have got a tremendous desire to to live and to thrive and if we could just give them a chance. We're throwing so many things at them. They just, they cannot cope. That's my, my, now I ask from the deepest part of my heart that we just give them a chance to, you know, do the things that they, they know how to do to, to, to live and to thrive. And they cannot take what we're throwing at them at the moment. They're just too many things. And this pollution is one of the many things they have to deal with. Um, so that's my great hope is that we can just, you know, give them the space um, uh, to, to thrive like they're meant to. Um, I think we are very, very close to, to time. Um, are there any other questions, uh, burning questions that uh, anyone has for anybody else um, uh, in, in, the, in the five minutes that we have left? Ella? Um, please, I'm just asking, when is the rollout? When can we start seeing these uh, new straws on our shelves? Um, yeah, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Ella, you'll be happy to know that we have started producing. Um, so we started producing at the beginning of September. So you should be able to see in the 200 ml pack within your supermarkets and straws. Yeah. Any other questions, Anya? Um, uh, uh, um, anything else from anybody else? Any, uh, any other ideas, questions, comments? 
Well, I, I would just say, Craig, I mean, it's been an absolute privilege to be in your company and, and those of the panelists. Um, you know, we, we welcome the input, um, you know, from, from all of you. Um, it's hard to navigate your way through this in a corporate world. I know it seems easy from the outside, but none of it, none of it happens quickly. This uh, paper straw thing, you know, was on the agenda three years ago. No one made one that would fit because it, because it's got a bend. Uh, you know, you think it's the simplest thing in the world, but well, it isn't. Uh, and then we found one and it was um, 15 times the price. So it couldn't work anyway. Um, and then we found ones that just dissolved in water. So that didn't help because by the time you got to the bottom of the thing, it would, it would dissolve. So, you know, we, 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 we're not defensive about it and we welcome the input uh, and the, the feedback from, you know, from these important organizations that yourself and these panelists are, are part of, um, you know, we like to hear about it because if we can understand it and if in our world and the things we do, we actually can change something, we will, uh, you know, and so we, you know, we just want to say that we, you know, we recipients of good insights uh, and we welcome them. Yeah, I think that this, this conversation has definitely given yeah, me hope. And I really appreciate all of you taking your time and coming on and talking, talking from the heart. It feels a very authentic um, conversation. And uh, yeah, I think it, this is so critical. Like Anya said, diversity is what we need. We need people from, from government, from corporate, from every walk of life, from conservation, working as closely together as possible, because we're all in this together. This, it's absolutely critical. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. I think we're pretty much uh, out of time and um, it's a you know, great privilege to be here and to hear from you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to the award-winning Craig Foster and his amazing guests. Absolutely. I mean, for a moment there, Millicent, I don't know about you, but I felt <laughs> like I'm experiencing a masterclass session today. <laughs> That's right. Now that time has come where we are about to give away some amazing Yay! prizes. Yay! just like that folks it's a wrap don't forget to tell your friends and everybody that you know to check out this amazing broadcast on our media partners platforms i love za social tv.co.za and saint twins tv go to the series website to find out more details visit netflix for craig's amazing story and you can also find out all about miss earth